big moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the woo woo water boy, duh! Well, good game day morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is game day, Sunday, week number two. The Dallas Cowboys will be taking on, oh my goodness, the Cowboys will be taking on the New Orleans Saints at home. And I tell you, I'm nervous on this one. Um, I'll be 100% real here because I, uh, I'm i here at the Red Brick House. I've already had Joseph Heatherly ask me, what's the record of the Cowboys when you're at the Red Brick House? I think it was 4-1 and one or 5-1 and one last year. Um, I don't have my jersey today. I don't have a jersey. So if the Cowboys don't, find a way to win i guess you can blame it on me i guess i don't know um be that as may the cowboys of course will be a little bit shorthanded because it doesn't look like jake ferguson is going to play they're going to be monitoring it but he is listed as doubtful and if you know the dallas cowboys if you're listed as questionable you normally will play pretty much if you're questionable you're playing if you're doubtful the cowboys don't play you you're not being played. You're just not getting on the field. Um, the question will be here. Uh, this is going to be a good test for the Cowboys. Uh, most people are picking the Cowboys to win over New Orleans. Uh, you know, people think New Orleans beating Carolina was fool's gold. That it was literally like scrimmaging a high school team because the Carolina Panthers are not a good team. Um, however, I'm going to say that defense led by Demario Davis, a guy that I wanted here in Dallas. Now, trust me, trust me. In his time with New Orleans, um, he's got 600 and almost 50 tackles, about 22 sacks, a couple of interceptions, and hasn't missed a single game. Mind you, that was the same year that we drafted Van Der Esch. Just saying. But he is the heart and soul of that defense, and that defense comes to play. Derek Carr. Now, this is an interesting one because we've had a lot of history with the Carr family. You might remember when we had the Super Bowl in Atlanta, there was David Carr who was, you know, showing everybody how good he was at the carnival uh, set up there at the NFL experience and things. And everybody, of course, said, you know, Dak De Prescott, he sucks, man. You know, maybe we should have David Carr. Be that as it may, David Carr never amounted to much. Derek Carr, what's interesting is when we were looking at getting Dak Prescott a deal a few years back, some people were saying that the Cowboys should have let Dak Prescott walk and gotten Derek Carr. Traded for Derek Carr. Yeah, moving right along. Um, the Cowboys have the opportunity now to show us how much they have, uh, how many strides they have made as far as this defensive front. Um, one of the things that you have to say is was the killer for us last year was stopping the run. And teams that could run the football gave us fits last year. We're talking about, of course, um, the San Francisco 49ers. We're talking about the Buffalo Bills. We're talking about the Miami Dolphins. And we're talking about the Green Bay Packers. Stopping the run has been the Dallas Cowboys bugaboo. And we're going to see, get a better chance this week to see. We did well last week, but I don't know if we can really look at that as a measuring stick. I'm not going to say the Browns were as bad as the Carolina Panthers, but they were basically missing. Both of the left tackles as well as Nick Chubb, which definitely curtailed their running game. Um, so I don't know that the Dallas Cowboys defense front played that well or if it was partially that the Cleveland Browns defense played that bad. So we'll take it. Okay, we got Jane Slater who's talking, of course, now.
OK. OK, we'll get back to Jane Slater in a few minutes. Um, for the Cowboys, we need to definitely get this win and get some momentum. We've got the Baltimore Ravens, and we're not looking past the Baltimore Ravens. But the Cowboys schedule is front loaded with all of the bigger games up front. If they can get through these first seven games, four and three, four and three, because we've got Baltimore in there, we've got Detroit in there, we've got the 49ers in there. Um, you don't want to lose this one to New Orleans. This, to me, is a must win game for the Dallas Cowboys. And we've got a lot to do to get ready for game day here. I've got to get down in the kitchen and get cooking and stuff uh, because we're going to be having um, shrimp poor boy. And I got shrimp that I got to peel, you know, I want the bubble, shrimp, bubble, bubble, bubble gump shrimps. You know, no, I didn't. I went to grocery store, but be that as it may, got to peel those shrimp and get them ready for that shrimp poor boys, as well as Joe Boo wings. Um, what's going to be good or what, what's interesting more than anything else is how this time last week we were sitting here thinking that Dak Prescott was going into the season that could be the last season that he's here with the Dallas Cowboys. And lo and behold, about 1130, it came across. Dak Prescott got his contract where he is the highest paid player in the history of the NFL. It was really neat this week to see him and his brother Tad talking about where they came from, basically from the trailer park to where he is now. And that his goal right now, the only thing, the only thing in his mind that's left to accomplish, he's, he's a father with a beautiful child. He's the highest played player in the NFL. He will own all of the Dallas Cowboys passing records. The only thing left now is he must get that Super Bowl. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. He has to get that Super Bowl win. And that's where he seems to be focused. And you seem to hear C.D. Lamb um, wanting to be that group. Those two guys want to be the best tandem in football and holding up a Lombardi trophy. And there's nothing that I want more myself than that. What's interesting is back to last week this time when we literally, literally had everybody talking about how bad the Cowboys were and how the Joneses were an ep because they didn't do the things that you need to do to be a successful team. How all of that has changed in one week to now. Um, they look at the Cowboys. Oh, this is a Cowboys win. The Cowboys should blow them out. The Cowboys are a good team. Cowboys are a Super Bowl team. How do you go through a whole off season where you have literally killed the Cowboys and said how much they suck, and in one week then all of a sudden say, they're the you know, best team in football. Not my words. Not my words. Listen to this. Wins last week, Mike T. Who you got? I got the Dallas Cowboys, and I was really concerned reading about not even sniff an opportunity in the past game. They looked as complete of a team as we've seen in two years. Mike hmm. Zimmer did a heck of a complete, job. Wait, wait, now, look, I know Cleveland was missing two tackles. But boy, Dallas's defense exceeded my expectations. Why the, the Super Bowl? Hold on, have not been telling everybody about the Dallas. So, so wait a minute. Mike Tenenbaum, the same guy who said he sees Sadur Sanders in Dallas more than he sees Dak Prescott next year. Now, all of a sudden, the best team, best built team, what? what? Dallas Cowboys roster and how they have two of everything. And yeah. we're talking yeah, about they weren't really bored of talent all the time. I'm not what? sure they have two running backs. Uh, they, they certainly do. not that aren't. Uh, yeah, they have two. Well, what I was going to say, I was just going to frame it this way. We miss you on Mondays. And this past Monday was the first time in the history of Get Up, and you've been there for all of them all these years, that we led with a Cowboys game and didn't talk about them at all. All we <laughs> talked about was how bad Cleveland yeah. was and how bad. So yeah. what did we learn about the Cowboys in you, week one? What we learned is Mike Zimmer is going to take this defense to another level, that Mike Zimmer understands how to use all these pieces. Someone like Overshone, who we saw in the nickel package and sub package at the Mike linebacker position, middle backer position, is going to add a different dimension of speed. So I think that's what we know. Offensive I don't believe we know a lot. Go is always the question. Uh, you had a rookie left tackle holding up okay against Miles yes. Garrett, right? I mean, big deal. Tyler, I, you mentioned the defense. Like, I, I had, this is the game I'm covering on Sunday. So, I've, I've already had some conversations with some people. I was talking to some of their defensive players, and they were saying, like, we really feel like last year, you know, we weren't as disciplined on defense, attention to detail, all that stuff. And they feel like, A, 
that playoff game really kind of brought it home for them. Wow. And B, you know, Mike Zimmer kind of brought it home right. for them. He had two sacks and interception, but now you have somebody that can do all the Close left, close right, making a check. Somebody that's comfortable within his defense to get them in the right position. Dan Quinn did such a good job that he parlayed his D.C. job into a head coaching yeah. job. But here we all are saying maybe the defense gets better yeah, under the but new But also, too, though, when, when, when you consistently hear the Parking same out. voice and it's the same thing all the time, you build your team in a, in a certain way. Mike Zimmer is a no-nonsense mm -hmm be glued into all the fundamental sort of guy. Details. And I think that's where this defense needed to go. Quick. Yeah, Greedy, I would say, like Ross said, Tyler Guyton to me is the big story. We saw T.J. Watt ruin that game against the Falcons. Dude. If we sat here a week ago, we'd say, oh, Miles Garrett's going to ruin the game. He didn't do that. No, Tyler Guyton, rookie left tackle out of Oklahoma, played really well. One more game for us here. Uh, Bartholomew, I'm coming to you. We got the Steelers. Funny, funny how we went from, you know, we've got questions about the Dallas Cowboys, you know, their rookie offensive lineman, their running game, you know, Diggs coming back, their linebacking core, Eric Kendricks is old and overshone, coming back from injury and never starting a game, to now all of a sudden we're too deep at every position? Are you kidding me? See, this is what, what's crazy is how – they literally talk about Cowboy fans. You know, they're, they're all up believing that they're Super Bowl. You know, here it is. And this, that, and the other. And it's like, wait a minute. You guys create the hype. You're the ones that are constantly here talking about the Dallas Cowboys, you know, being, you know, the Super Bowl favorite and everything, this, that, and the other. And now, of course, the, the thing that you build, you turn around and, and condemn us for the hype machine that you're making. Look. As much as I would love to say, the Dallas Cowboys are going to the Super Bowl. I can't say that. That's crazy. That's insane. We're not anywhere near there yet, guys. It's been one freaking week. There are going to be teams. I, I remember the Arizona Cardinals starting out 4-0 and everybody thinking that they were going to be great. And they didn't win a game after that. I remember the Eagles team starting out 9-0 and and limping into the playoffs and losing to Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Put away the anointment cream one week at a time. One week at a time. And, um, yeah, one week at a time. So we'll be here starting at 1245. We'll be live. Might even start a little bit early. I might get some cameras down into the uh, kitchen there where we're making the shrimp poor boy and everything else. So you guys can watch what we're doing down there. And um, we will definitely be here um, uh, here at the Red Brick House. I know my brother-in-law is supposed to be here and another one of Tracy's cousins. And, and who knows who else might be here? Who knows who else might be here? But we're definitely going to be here. We're going to be watching the Cowboys at a 1 o'clock kickoff. So it's going to be early. So I need to go get my shit together. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And uh, Washington and the Giants will be playing at 1 o'clock today too. So that will be interesting as well. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. And um, remember, always. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out.